Welcome to the Landco Podcast, where we aim to bring value to landowners and prospective land buyers through our experiences and network. I'm your host and managing partner of Landco, John O'Reilly. Hey guys, welcome back to the Landco Podcast. Um, we are a little late with this episode. This would be uh, the year-round Whitetail Hunter episode four, right? For April? No. Yeah. Yes. April. So episode four. Um, we're in like the middle of May. We ran into a couple audio issues and we're right in the middle of planting season. So we're a little late. Uh, in addition to that, we're having trouble with the schedules between Matt and Ryan. So we're recording Ryan first and then we'll do Matt second. I'll just kind of combine those as one episode. So um, we'll hop into it. Ryan's out at his farm. We're just starting to get a little rain. Is it raining out in Cuba? No, we didn't get any rain at all yet. A few sprinkles, but nothing to make me stop working. That's so weird. We're in Peoria and it started last night at like 9, 10. It rained most of the night. Oh, weird. Um, Okay, well, let's get into it on, um, remember we're talking about, so nothing May, April. You were busy finally getting stuff in the ground, right? Getting started. We were working ground, basically, and getting some uh, pre-emergence on for, on our spray uh, for our fields to, to knock out the weeds and keep them from coming up while the, while the new uh, crops start to emerge. Um, did that. I did a uh, little bit of dirt work, some creek crossings. Uh, just trying to get caught up on that kind of stuff before the, the big push for the planting season. Right. Um, now we're in May. Most of that. Well, I shouldn't say that. Is most of the stuff in the ground now or no? Uh, yes. All I finished uh, today on all the production crops. So we're, okay. we're uh, smooth sailing now. We just need a little bit of heat and some moisture and, uh, and we should be good. We, I planted my first crops uh, April 22nd. Um, and they're they're kind of struggling because we got somewhere around four inches of rain on it, and then it got uh, real windy, so the top crusted over, so the the corn is having a hard time breaking through. Our sunflower fields are, um, I think they'll be okay, but they're struggling as well to come up because of the ground being the top layer of dirt right now is really hard yeah. because it dried out so quickly with the wind that we had after that big yeah. rain. So yeah. a little rain tonight will help a lot. I got the same thing on my farm. Um, so what did you end up, end up planting? Like what sort of mix? Just our typical corn and beans on our production ground. And then uh, just got right before we did this, I was planting some sorghum uh, for our pheasants and quail. And uh, I'm actually going to try uh, and plant some sorghum for uh, and flood it for the ducks and see how that works this year. Um, I've got a little area that we're going to use as a uh, – as a trial and see how that works. But uh, uh, sunflowers, planted those, and then uh, did some alfalfa uh, and clover. Got all that in, in uh, probably around April, early May. Okay. It's funny that you say that about um, the sorghum because we're doing that uh, podcast with Jody Graff, and he always talks about how sorghum, where he's at, is incredible flooded. So I'm trying one on my uh well my personal farm and double flux so between the three of us we'll see if it works yeah i'm excited to see i've never tried it and i've, I've had uh, did a little research just on the internet and some guys think it's awesome so yeah i got one that's uh blackbird and we're getting off topic here but i got one that's supposed to be blackbird resistant um i don't know if that makes a difference but it always drives me mad like sunflowers or millet or all that stuff you see like swarms of like Blackbirds by the billions and just right. get pissed off. Um, it's supposed to be blackbird proof. We'll see if that matters. But Jody was saying that, like on the millet, when they swarm that, that they only eat like twenty percent. The rest they knock over. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. Huh. Um, but in, in terms of like your mix that you usually do for the deer, the plot, so not the production stuff. Um, the only, the only get, stuff I've got planted is is I did some. We've got. We've got some farms where access is kind of difficult uh, once the crops are in. So yeah. I took and moved the crops out away from the edges of the timber so that we can get around the whole farm until the crops are, are harvested in the fall. Uh, so what I did is put a 15-foot strip of alfalfa around our fields. Yeah. 
So that'll help for the wildlife and also gives us a nice uh, pathway to drive on or walk on or, or whatever. Um, plus the round, the, the alfalfa I used was Roundup Ready. So we won't have, we can just spray it, keep the weeds out um, until, it, you know, otherwise we'll just mow it. And then I planted some white tail clover and then everything else I plant outside of uh, those, those the clover, alfalfa, corn, and beans I'll plant in August, and that'll be our radishes, turnips, and those, those types of uh, mixtures. Yep. So what mix do you like to get to in terms of grains versus greens? I know that Matt always seems to be heavy greens. You always tend to favor grains a little bit. I just like, I like the grains for late season. Now, yeah. this last uh, season, we had acres and acres of beans that were never even touched. Um, and I could only – Contribute to that is that we had a, uh, a milder winter, I guess, and the deer weren't as stressed and didn't need as much food. Uh, but we, they did not eat the beans like they normally do. And uh, I tend to agree with Matt. Uh, on the greens, they hit that even in January. Um, you know, your winter, your sugar beets and winter bulbs and your radishes, uh, and turnips. Uh, they were still they were still in there pawing up the actual bulbs in that were yeah. in January. So, yeah. um, what was your mix? What was your ratio last year in terms of grains to greens? So half and half. No, we were way heavier on grains. That's uh, right. Yeah. Okay. You know, say if we had you know forty acres of grain plots, you know, I probably had twelve acres, fifteen acres in the uh, in the greens. Yeah, is that what you think you'll be again this year? Yeah, probably. I'll probably just keep that. Um, okay. This year we didn't run out of food for once, and that was yeah. I, that was very very, very good. Uh, you know, one of these years we're going to have a very hard winter, and the grains are going to come into a bigger play. So, right. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> is any of the design that you laid these out revolve around where you anticipate or saw deer from last year that you want to shoot this year? Like, are you planning your plots uh, around kill plots and what deer you want to harvest, or are you just lay them out how they best work and let the chips fall where they may? A uh, little bit of both. Uh, I always like to have my green plots, like like the tower blinds or tree stands, I'll tend to have those lay everything out around the location of the, the blind and or, or tree stands. Um, if, if you can do that, if you've got the right trees and, and so on and so forth. But uh, I tend, they, more than more often than not, they will hit the greens and then move to the grain. So I'll have, you know, the first, you know, I'm lucky enough that our food plots are big enough to where I can lay this out to where I'll have 20 or 30 yards of green, be able to shoot the, the, the deer possibly in the green as he's going to grain. Uh, and I do have some plots that are just strictly grain, but if I, if I can incorporate green, as they're coming out of their, their bedding areas, hit the green, and then they will trans transition over into the grain after they graze through the green. Yeah. Okay. Um, trying not to keep this too long because I have to do the same thing with Matt. What else are we uh, are you moving stands around? Are all those good? Are you cleaning up trails? Feel that stuff. Um, yeah. I guess we're talking about April. So yeah, I did adjust a couple stands in April. Uh, like I said, I touched up a couple creek crossings that needed some riprap in them or busted up concrete uh, yeah. because of, you know, some heavy rains that we had had and, and touched those up to get farm equipment through them. Um, did a little bit of clearing as far as uh, around field edges yep. and pushing back some of the brush basically that has grown up to give us a few more acres of tillable. Uh, and then, uh, we're on a project right now where uh, we're actually just wrapping it up is we built 14 dry dams on one farm and we're just wrapping that up uh, so that uh, we can get everything seeded as far as we'll probably just seed that with some uh, rye uh, yeah. and, and some uh, alfalfa. So. Okay. okay. Um, we're almost into May, so we'll probably do this or almost we're in the middle of May. So we're almost at the end of May. We'll probably do another one of these in like two weeks. Uh, just kind of like a short anticipation of May, or finish up all your grains, um, prep for what, August plots? 
Yeah, like all our, you know, another thing that we've done is we sprayed all yeah. of our pots that we are, we aren't going to plant until August uh, to keep the weed competition down, so that you know they're not four and five foot tall weeds when we go in there in August. So we'll maintain those throughout the rest of the summer uh, the best that we can to, to keep them, you know, maintainable until we go in there in August and actually till them up and plant them. Uh, yeah. And you know, there's always. I'll be working on cameras, getting cameras ready to go because I always put cameras out in July, and we, I run a lot of cameras, so that's a pretty big undertaking. Making sure getting all the batteries switched out, SD cards on. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, good enough. Um, we're at about ten minutes, so I'll try to do the same with Matt to keep it twenty minutes or so. Uh, anything that we missed? Not that I can think of. What? Okay. Um, Okay, well, cool. Well, we're done with this one, but we're not done with the podcast because I'm going to um, talk to Matt later tonight and and kind of sandwich those together. So uh, we will be back at you uh, shortly with Matt. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll be back shortly. Matt is at his Fairview farm, so if we have a little uh, reception issue, just kind of be patient with us. But um, we shouldn't have the clicking issue that we had with Pewit, so all good. Hopefully not. How's it going out of the farm? You staying out there all week? Yeah, man. Just uh, taking a little quarantine away from home and getting some, uh, getting out in the country a little bit and enjoying the property. Nice. Well, you can't tell us too much because it's officially May. So that'll be like next month. Right. <laughs> so think back to uh, April. Um, I talked to Ryan about what he did. You know most of this, but you know he was mostly planting. Um, he has a bunch of production crops. So we did that. And I talked to him about like why he planted what he did, why he planted it where he did. So sure. um, I do have a couple pictures here that you sent me, but give me a rundown of kind of what you did you know, throughout April in anticipation for this coming hunting season. Sure. And I'll try and kind of piece it together with the pictures you've got. So um, to try and work with the weather the best that we could, we finished up some uh, burning that we had to do. Uh, we've got a little top area, um, that's really overgrown with grasses. It's a great bedding area up there, but needed to uh, be burned for some new growth. So we went ahead and burned off a, a part of that um, close to a new field that we planted. Is that at the farm that you're at right now? It is. Okay. Um, let me bring me back up. I, so would that be on the, what, far it's like east the south, side? Uh, southwest end. Southwest. That's not where I was thinking it was. No, I'm oh. sorry. Um, let me put that on. Actually, it's the, I'm turned around here, Northeast end. Okay. That's where I thought it would be. Yeah. So that's where that big, um, kind of grassy unused area was, right? Exactly. And we've kind of, um, you know, it was kind of trial and error when we first got the farm to really see what we were going to do with that area and seeing what the, the deer travel and patterns are like through there. We've, we've gone and created a new field. We went in and did a bunch of clearing, um, did some burns around there, uh, and it's, it's, it's killer. We got a new blind set up in there and uh, got great pictures on that field last year. And we're hoping for uh, it to be a really nice setup this, uh, this coming season. So what do you, first of all, what are you going to put up there? Um, so with, we're kind of limited because of the size of um, some of our fields and the high deer density uh, with putting crops. Uh, so, you know, we've tried. Crop- How big is that? How big is that field? This new field that we've created is probably an acre and a half. I would say maybe two acres. Um, so we've tried planting fields like that before in the past, and you know we get things planted, the deer just mow it down, and we yeah. don't get a, a, a good crop. So uh, we've had really good luck just with you know a green mix, uh, brassica, alfalfa, clover mixture. Um, you know we really like sugar beets. Um, purple top turnip, you know, especially for late season, they just uh, seem to smash them pretty hard around then. Yeah. So two things about that location. Yeah. Um, one, it's ideal. And you can explain more why, but like imagining the layout of that farm, I don't have to pull up a map to give away all your secrets, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> back to the east, well, north, well, northeast and south from that plot, there is little to no agriculture well for a while for a long while right correct so there is some up to the north um there's a there's a but what a quarter quarter mile or a half mile uh from where this area is at yeah it's at least a half mile 
Okay. Oh, there's Glenn back there. Oh. Should we pull up, we pull the, up the, the Glenn shot? The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> yeah. Appearance. What's up, Glenn? Hi, buddy. <laughs> We're just trying to teach people how to shoot deer like you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, other than that, there's really not uh, – any ag fields until you go over a mile back to our, our South end. So, yeah. um, any kind of, you know, diversity we can make with food in those areas, given that it butts right up against some really nice bedding is just, uh, it's a killer spot. Yeah. So I would have said beans like it. I'm sure Puke would have said beans too. And I understand why you can't because of the size. Sure. Um, so that makes sense. Um, yeah, and I mean, we, we, we like to plant for, all seasons and the fact that you know if we plant beans given it's not a huge field high deer density you know it's not it may make it through summer and into early season but you know come past the rut and get into late season that field's going to be worthless there's not going to be any food in there so we like to uh expand and be able to feed the deer all season long even into uh you know the the late parts yeah, of winter okay and this has nothing to do with anything but can't you can that's a bigger area than that, isn't it? Can you extend that field in the future? So we, it's, you know, we've got a, a field up top there that's about three acres. Um, and it's with what we're, we've got up there, there's some lakes that kind of split it. There's a thin strip there. We could do some clearing, but the, the terrain's not really ideal for planting up there. Okay. We, we like it more for the tall grasses for bedding just off the field edges. Yeah. Um, the spot that we just made this new field was, was pretty ideal. Um, especially in proximity, you can have a guy hunting one field. You can have a guy hunting another field. Um, neither one's going to mess up the other hunt and they're, they're hunting essentially two different kinds of deer. We're pulling them from two different parts of the farm. So right. it worked out pretty well. Okay. Um, let me see what other pictures you got. Well, I want to talk more about what you're planning and why yeah. and where in a minute, but let's, I guess I want to get through your transition pictures as before. we move forward. You know, we got that done. Uh, we were finishing up, uh, you know, shed hunting, uh, deer seemed, especially with all the food we have on the farms, you know, they dropped, uh, pretty late this year compared to other years. So the picture that you, that I sent yeah. you was from, from April from a pretty nice shed that I stumbled across, uh, on one mm -hmm. of the farms. Just, um, just the corn stubble picture right there. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's right actually by a, a blind and a stand that we have and we'd walked it pretty often. And, um, you know, it seems like that shed had been sitting there for a while, but you know, in corn, it's really hard to see those things. So I guess it didn't really stick out until it had been sitting in the sun for a little while. Uh, but that's, that's off a of deer that we had a lot of pictures of, um, you know, had opportunities to go in after him, but, uh, you know, knowing he's going to be a stud next year, we chose not to really okay. pursue it. And, uh, I think it's going to pay off because I mean, that's a, it may not show in the picture, but that's a really, really nice antler. So I think we talked about this last episode, which would have been, what was that? March, mm -hmm. um, but you, most people were out shed hunting in March and you were saying you maybe held up a little bit, right? Yeah. Especially, you know, with them dropping so late, um, we really don't want to go into some of those thicker bedding areas, knowing that a lot of these bigger deer that we've been watching, were still holding both sides. Uh, the yeah. last thing I want to do is, you know, go in and bump them out onto the neighbor's property for them to drop their antlers or just spook them out of an area they're comfortable in. Um, so, you know, we buy our time, uh, watch the cameras closely, you know, our cutty links, which we've talked about and, uh, make sure it's the right time, make sure they've dropped and then we'll go in and, and look, look for them. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I have one more picture before I forget and then we can move on. Um, this is just, looks like a nice fresh clover field, man. Yeah. So that's, um, that's on our Peoria County farm. Um, I was out there, uh, this time of year like to go in and make sure all of our trails are cleared to, um, you know, get to stands, get to fields. I don't like going in there late summer as deer are starting to develop their summer feeding patterns. Um, don't like to disturb the timber. So we went in, cleared all the trails, uh, that we needed to for that. And on some other farms and while I was out there, I checked on a couple of our fields and that's our, our clover field, uh, that we've got there. We'll broadcast some, some brassicas into it later, but I'd like to make sure that, uh, the weeds are under control. Uh, so just checking on that, yeah. that field is, uh, very healthy right now. It looks great. Yeah, that looks solid. Let me get you back. I just got a text. I'm a little, um, hired just text me. I hate getting okay. these texts. He just said, just a heads up. I might have to replant most, if not all of the wetlands. It's like, oh, great. Oh, great. It's like 60 acres. Guess we've got all our corn in. 
and Ryan talked about this on the sunflowers. We got all that corn in, and then it rained, and then it got super windy. Right. And the top of like our wetlands and a lot of our fields are like concrete, man. Well, that was what I talked to, you know, on our last recording that the audio was so bad. You know, I was talking to Ryan. I said, are there any fields that you've done so far that you're going to have to replant? And, yeah. You know, that's a worry with the rains that we had and then those heavy winds. I was, I was wondering how some of the plantings were going to turn out. Yeah, I'm worried too. Um, sorry, just reading this a little bit because my sunflowers, the same, like maybe 10% of them have popped. That's not a good sign. Right. Uh, the wetlands have not in my farm. Uh, I mean, I know it's a bummer to have to go and redo things, but you should still have time to get those sunflowers. Yeah, we have. Well, we hurry on the field. We're, we need to, we're going to get a lot of rain here over the weekend, probably. Yeah. We need to hurry on the sunflowers, and we have some time on the corn if we go to like a 90 day. But sure. Um, back to here. Uh, <laughs> you prepped your field. Since you guys do mostly green stuff, you're mostly prepping. You're not planting much yet. Yeah. So some, you know, we have a few farms that we that we have, and you know, some of them do have majority of crops in there. We do split, you know, put some green fields in those. But uh, a couple of our farms, you know, just because of the size of the fields that we have, uh, crops just haven't worked for us very well with the high deer density. Unless you know, we were to go yeah. and some of these fields off. Um, you know, we've had really good luck. We've we've used Horny Buck Seed um, Company. It's worked really well for us over the years. You know, it's, I, I say the test is, you know, we can drop it in a pile of gravel and it's going to grow. Yeah. Uh, and so right now, yeah, it's it's weed control um, on our fields, um, you know, getting ready to fertilize, make sure that they're, they're healthy. Uh, and then, you know, late summer before uh, we get to Labor Day, we'll go in and uh, some of the fields will prep to, you know, do plantings of brassica. Some of them we're going to broadcast into some existing fields, and some we're going to go in and just plant completely because we planted annuals in some of them yeah. last year, and it needs to be totally redone. So, <laughs> right. I don't think it would grow in the gravel behind you. That stuff looks nice and clean. Glenn's yeah. got it sparkling clean back there. What did you do? Just top coat that recently? Oh yeah, oh yeah, man. <laughs> it's uh, he's he's been hard at work here during this stay at home quarantine kind of thing, you know, coming out here, it's, uh, you know, I've seen golf courses that don't look as nice as it does out here right now, which, you know, you wouldn't think, Oh, place it's that nice. You're not going to kill any big deer. Well, that's, <clears throat> this is the farm that he shot a 211 inch deer off of this past. Yeah. Season. You know what though? That's, a, um, and that's a good thing to talk about. We don't have to go into it too, too much, but maybe a different podcast, but that setup out there, like you guys can do as much as you want by your cabin because it does little to nothing to your hunting in the back. Absolutely not. I mean, yeah. it's, I love the setup of this place and we, you know, manicured it to be what it is, yeah. um, you know, through some careful planning and everything, you know, I, we do have a stand that's, you know, probably less than a hundred yards from where I'm sitting now. And during the season it gets traffic because of where it's located and, um, the timber that surrounds it. But you know, I can do anything I want here. I had my kids out here earlier, you know, screaming and we took a gator ride and everything, but we don't disturb a large majority of the deer population out here with what we do. Yeah, for sure. Um, but that would be a good podcast or maybe video of that yeah, place out there. For sure. Um, so those uh, green plots, Peter was keeping his sprayed. Yeah. You got to keep those sprayed just to keep them under control. So come August, September, they're manageable or you just deal with them then. Yeah. So what we like, to do, I mean, we'll go in and, um, definitely mowing to control the weeds with some, uh, the right kind of fertilizer, uh, on, especially a lot of the fields have a, a pretty dense, you know, it's a lot of clover in there. So I don't like to use, uh, a lot of nitrogen. Um, you know, we'll go in and use the right kind of fertilizer, get things sprayed and, you know, make sure that they're mowed and manicured so that come time to broadcast brassicas, they're, uh, they're looking nice. So they're not going to get choked out by the weeds. Yep. Got it. Are you uh, cleaning any trails or like that's kind of a year round job out there? I know Pubic was in the woods fixing crossings, uh, cleaning trails up. Do you have to sure. do any of that or it looks pretty good? You know, it's a year round maintenance, but the maintenance <laughs> as it gets later in the year is, is minimal. You know, you might have yeah. a tree that comes down or, or something that blows in it. But for the most part, we've already gone through and cleared the trails out. Um, you know, mow them down really low to the dirt and make sure that they're clear to trees and brush. 
uh, so that now that as we're getting into the warmer weather, these bucks start, you know, growing their velvet, the does are dropping their fawns. We kind of like to stay out of the, you know, the timbers and off of our trails yep. and our stands and food plots as much as we can. Okay, cool. We're at uh, a little over already. Anything else that we missed? I don't think so, man. I think we got it uh, covered. You know, okay. we're, we're already halfway into May, so I've been making notes about what we've been doing during Good. Uh, try and prep for next, uh, this- for next one. This time we'll try to get it uh, on time. It was just tough this this month because, first of all, Pudic's planting, like all the production stuff. Second of all, we had that awful audio glitch, and we could have got it out last week, but it was just unbearable. Like, I just I couldn't listen to it. So, sure. Next next month we'll be a little more on top of our game. Right. Sounds good, man. Yeah.